Now we're in math point four, functions and linear functions and equations. So in math, there are these three kinds of graph that you will see uh, for the SAT. And for graphs with a line, straight line, these are called linear functions. So I'm going to put linear here. So it's, it's like a line, linear functions. Uh, if you see a graph that looks like a U shape, then these are called quadratic functions, or quadratic graphs, quadratic. And if you see something that looks like this, it's flat and then it shoots up, then these are called exponential, exponential graphs or equations. Um, and you will see these linear graphs when it's, um, when the variable is one, quadratic if it's, uh, not the variable, the exponent is one, for the uh, the x value, quadratic would be the exponent being two. Uh, so we have this parabola shape, and then exponential, um, like exponents, like two to the x power, two to the first power, two to the second power, and so on. Um, for those graphs, it would look like that. And for now, let's focus on the linear functions. The formula for linear function for a line, they look like y equals mx plus uh, b um, and or you can say this is f of x equals uh, mx plus b or y and the different in this equation there are different components so i'm going to write that here there is the f of x part or the y part and what that is is Maybe I can make this text a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And like that. Okay. <clears throat> and this, that is the, you can think of that as the output or the value of a function. Um, and so you have a graph, it's usually asks you what's the value of. Um, how many miles are there? How, what is the total cost? That's usually the, the total, the, the value of the function. And then you have the uh, m value here. The m is the, in math you may see, it's called uh, the slope. But what the slope means in regular English is the change in the value, which is like the f of x per unit of x per um, change in x. Okay, so uh, the slope in this line, for example, is for every change in x, you have um, here, if for every, well, every change in x, you have a change in, uh, in the height. So it's usually delta change in y over change in x. So for the slope here, change in y, is 2 for every one change in x. So the slope is 2 over 1. Okay, so that's the, the m value here. And then the x is the, um, the, uh, the, 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 I can call it the, the input or the variable. Um, usually that's like, for example, um, the number of days that has gone by or um, or I don't know um, number of people um, or number of years and so on um, and in maybe in math or in science class you'll learn that the y value is the dependent variable and the x value is the independent variable. So what this means is um, you can change x freely and whenever you change x independent, in, independently then the value of y is dependent on the value of x. So y changes as the x changes. So that's why this is called dependent. y is dependent on the x and x is independent. x moves freely. And then lastly, we have the b value there. And what b is, is the, you can think of that as the, um, 
in math, it's the y-intercept, but in regular English, it's just the original amount. You can think of it as the original amount. Okay. Um, so here's a practice question. We have h equals 1.88L plus 32.01. The formula above can be used to approximate the height h in inches of an adult male based on the length l in inches of his femur. What is the meaning of 1.88 in this context? Here we have 1.88, that's over here. Okay. And this is the m value here. m is the slope. That's how much the change in the value of, um, a, of h based on every per change in x. So in this case, it's per change in l. So what that means is, and if this is um, new to you, um, then we can graph it here, but here we'll use y and x for the graph. L plus 32.01. And see this line very far on the top left corner, so we're going to drag this down a little bit. It looks like that. Okay. So what this means is, and we're going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, I think this is good. So here you'll see that this 32.01 will be this value here. 32.01, the, that's the y-intercept. That's where the graph intercepts the, uh, the y-axis here, 32.01. And the 1.88 means the slope. So the slope is for every change in 1 of x, you would have a change of 1.88 in the y-value. Okay, so here, this one grid from here to here would be one value, one change in L, in this L. And when you have this one change in L, you go up by 1.88. So if you would look very closely from here to here, that's about 1.88. And then from here to here is one. From here to here is another 1.88. Okay, that's what this graph looks like here. And when you have a graph like this, that means imagine at the very beginning, at this point, where the value for L is zero. Okay, if this value for L is zero, then this value 1.88 times zero would be zero so this number is like it doesn't exist it's like zero you have zero plus 32.01 and you get 32.01 for the h which is the height in inches of the adult male okay what that means is um, based on the length of his femur if his length if the length of his femur is um, is zero at the very beginning then the height of the male can be approximated to 32.01 and if the length of his femur is 1 so if this L here is 1 okay, if this L here is 1 then his height can be approximated by 1.88 plus 32.01 if his femur is 2 inches then his height in inches could be approximated by 1.88 times 2 plus this and so on and so forth what, that's what this equation means so if you understand what this equation means then and you know that this 1.88 is the slope and that's the change in the value of height per change in the in l then you can see that this is the length the um this is not the approximate length of the femur but it's approximate change in his height so you're looking for change change and here you have the approximate increase in the men's femur uh, increases approximate change, increasing change in the men's femur. For each increase of um, not of this much in height is per change in x. x is just one unit to the right. So approximate increase in the men's, um, and it's also not the men's femur length, it's the change in h. h is the men's height. Right? h is the men's height. So it's approximate increase in the men's height that's right, for each one inch increase in his femur length. Basically, D is saying this. What does M mean? N means it's a change in the value of this, which is a change in the value of the men's height, H, per change in X. Per change in X here, the X is the L. L is the length of his femur uh, per, per one unit to the right, so per one inch increase in his femur. So D is the right answer. Okay. And if the question asks what is the meaning of 32.01,
in the context. And what would you say? 32.01 is the y-intercept. That's or the original amount, right? So the original, original amount means if this L is 0. Before any length in his femur, then the height of the person in inches will be this much. That's like the original height. And the question may ask, what does L represent? L represents the, um, the length of his femur. And what does the H represent? H is the inches, his, uh, the value of the function, the value of his height. So that covers all the different uh, components of this equation. There's the H, which is the f of, y, uh, f of x or y. There's the 1.88, which is the slope. There's the L, which is the x. And there's the 32.01, and that's the y-intercept. Cool, let's move on to number two. The distance d in feet from the ground to the flag on the flagpole t seconds after the person begins lowering it is modeled by this function. In the function, what does 20 represent? Okay, so this question seemed very similar to this question above, but we're going to try to do it without looking at the question above and see if, uh, if we can remember a good amount of it. Um, if you're not quite good at visualizing a graph, line graph yet, even though you should, then feel free to use decimals calculator on your computer screen. And so here we'll graph equals 20 minus 2t. So we end up with this line here. Uh, and maybe this can help you visualize. Um, and as for what does 20 represent, so it might be good to note that you're looking for this. And what does 20 represent? 20 is the, the, co um, the constant, the value here. And this is before there's any change in um, before you start moving to the right in this, in, in this line. So before you start moving, that's like the original value, remember? Before we're talking about the original, taking a quick peek here, this is the original amount, B, the constant here. So 20 represents, and you're looking for, so like the original um, D, the original distance of something. That's what you're looking for. Uh, the distance in feet of the flag from the ground before it's lowered. And that's probably it, before it is lowered, before we start moving. This is, B is um, after two seconds. So this would be after two seconds, that would be when T is two. So not quite what 20 represents. Um, the number of seconds, and this is wrong because um, before we said that at the very beginning, at this point here, this point gets us D of T equals 20. D of T is the distance. So we're looking for the distance, the original distance. C is talking about the number of seconds, that's wrong. D is talking about the rate, and that's wrong. So the answer is A, the distance, but the original distance, original time before anything happened. Number three. Uh, number three can be a little bit intimidating because the graph, uh, the, the, the chart here, the graph here looks a little bit intimidating, um, and it's a pretty long question. During mineral formation, the same chemical compound can become different minerals depending on the temperature and pressure at the time of formation. A phase diagram is a graph that shows the condition that are needed to form each mineral. The graph above is a portion of the phase diagram. So this is a phase diagram. For aluminosilicates with the temperature T in degrees Celsius on the horizontal axis. So here is temperature and the pressure P in gigapascals on the vertical axis. So this is the pressure and that's the temperature. And you have an equation um, of the boundary line between the andalusite and siliminate, 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 siliminate region. It's approximated by the equation above. What is the meaning of the t-intercept of this line? Okay, so you're given this equation and what will be helpful is if you can try to figure out what this uh, this equation, which is, remember, without with the power being 1, this is a line, uh, to figure out what this line means in this graph. And it gives you hints that this is the boundary line between the andalusite, andalusite and siliminate. Siliminate is here. So between these two, that makes you think that that equation is this line. Okay, and it, indeed it is. Um, if you're not sure you wanted to visualize it, you can graph that. y equals negative 0 0.00146t um, to x plus 1.11. Um, and well, you end up with this line that looks kind of horizontal. 
Um, and that might throw you off because that line doesn't look like this slanted line. But if you change the, um, the value here, so the x-axis goes from, uh, what is this? It goes from, uh, this is like 350, I think. So this goes from 350 to 800. And the y-axis goes from 0 to 1. Then you do see this line like that. Um, in fact, I shouldn't zoom out. I should go back to 350, 800, and this is 0 and 1, and you have a line that's exactly like this. Okay. Um, well, exactly like this, except it stops at this uh, 500 point. So it stops here, but for this part, it's, it looks just like this. Okay, and it asks, what is the meaning of the t-intercept of this line? The t-intercept is the uh, t is the the x value here, right? So t-intercept. So t-intercept is this point here, seven sixty point zero. That's this point at the bottom. What does so the question basically is asking, what does this point here mean? It is the maximum temperature at which siliminate can form. Okay, and siliminate is this. Okay, so you can look at this area and see what is the maximum temperature for siliminate. And this is the temperature. So anything on like this line and perhaps to the right of it um, can be the temperature for siliminate. But for this point here, 760. So 760 is not the maximum temperature at which siliminate can form. Um, this point here is like close to 800 degrees Celsius. And this point here can form siliminate too. So that means A is wrong. The temperature at which both endolucid and siliminate can form where there is no pressure applied. Okay, so there's no pressure applied. What does that mean? We'll take a look at the graph and this is pressure. Okay, and so the higher this is one um, gigapascal pressure and this is zero gigapascal pressure. So this is like no pressure. And this point is the temperature at which both these can form where there's no pressure applied and there's zero pressure. So I think this is the right answer. It is the increase in number of degrees in Celsius. There's no increase, just a point. So C, you know it's wrong. Uh, and D, it's, it's not increasing or decreasing, it's just a point there. Okay, so C and D are wrong and B is the right answer. Let's move on to the next part for linear function and equations. And a line equation, a line equation like um, like this, a line equation has or like x plus one, two x plus two, um, or two line equations. Um, they have zero solution when the equation. Let me change this here there should be um, two linear equations have okay, let's cross that out two linear equations have zero solution when the equation simplifies to um, I'll, I'll just tell you this um, and I'll explain later why it's maybe not be important for you to remember the detail here um, if when the equation can simplify to zero equals to a number and there's one solution when the equation simplifies to um, x equals to something, uh, x being the variable x, and infinitely many number solution when the equation simplifies to something that looks like 0 equals to 0. Okay. Uh, what this means is 0 equals to a number, but the number is not 0. And this is, it simplifies to 0. Mm, let me give you an example. So here we have x minus 1 equals 2x minus 2, and you're trying to find how many solutions are there for x. And if you try to simplify by, let's say, subtracting x on both sides, then in this equation, you end up with 1, negative 1 equals x minus 2. And if you go ahead and add 2 on both sides, you end up with nothing here, and 1 equals x. Okay, 1 equals x looks like this, x equals something. So that means this equation here has one solution. Okay, let's take a look at this next, this next one. x plus 1 equals x minus 1. 
if you try to simplify this by subtracting x on both sides, you end up with 1 equals negative 1. Okay? And then you can simplify that by uh, subtracting 1 or add 1 on both sides. Let's say uh, add 1 on both sides, you end up with 2 equals 0. Okay? 2 equals 0 looks like this. 0 equals to a number. So that means in this equation, there are no solutions. And just let's pick number 5 here as an example. Uh, this simplifies, if you distribute, this becomes 2x minus 2 equals 2x minus 2. You can divide, uh, cross out the 2x on both sides, subtract 2x on both sides, add 2 on both sides. This would end up with 0 equals 0, which is this. And so this has infinitely many number of solutions. And this is the math way to do it. However, now that you're given a calculator, um, decimals, it's perhaps, it's not that important for you to know the details, um, for you to know these rules. Maybe if you want to just use a calculator, what you could do is you could type in, type in, uh, type in the expression of the left and the right. So what that means is on the left, we have x minus 1. On the right, we have 2x minus 2. And we kind of have to like zoom out a bit here. Just by looking at it, the number of solution, number of solution, how many solutions there are, means how many times these two graphs intersect each other. So just by looking at it, you kind of know that there's one solution because they cross each other once. So the answer is one. Now, looking at the second part, x plus one uh, and x minus one, you end up with two parallel lines. It doesn't seem like they're crossing each other, so this means they don't cross each other, so there's new, there is zero solution. For this one, just to show how it looks like, 2x minus 1, and here 2x minus 2. They, you only see a line because they overlap each other. If you hide the blue, you see the red. And by overlapping with each other, then every single point on this line works for both the red line and the blue line, so that's why there's there are infinitely many number of solutions. Okay, so if you want to do the math way, you simplify the equation and see if you end up with one of these. And whatever you end up with, then it's either one, uh, zero solution, one solution, or infin infinitely many. Um, if you have a quadratic function, like x squared or something, um, it's the same idea. You ultimately want to see if it equals to zero equals a number, x equals something, or zero equals to zero. And it's one of these three. However, if that's too much to remember, then don't sweat it. Just type in the equation into the decimals calculator and you get the answer right away. Okay, so go ahead and do three, four, and six, seven. Um, either do it the, by the hand way, the math way, or with a decimals calculator, and then check it with a classmate and see if you guys end up with the same answer, hopefully with that explanation and a example for um, all three cases, you know what, how they look like and you would be able to do these questions pretty quickly. So let's move on. Practice question. 3 times 3x plus 5 equals kx plus 15. In the equation above, x is a constant. If all values of x satisfy the equation, what is the value of k? Okay. So the question says, if all values of x satisfy the equation, that means there are infinitely many number of solutions. So that means any x works. Um, what you can do is you can ultimately Notice that if you have infinitely many number of solution, then this left side equals to the right side, like here, 2x minus 2 equals 2x minus 2. So if you have that, that math in sight, what you could do is you could solve the math way, which is 3 times 3x plus 5 equals kx plus 15, and you know that they have to equal to each other. Um, if you distribute this, you end up with 9x plus 15 equals k x plus 15 and just by looking at it there's 15 there's 15 they're the same and in order for this and this to be the same then k need to be 9 so the answer is 9 okay that's the math way to do it however if the math way is hard you don't remember it um you blank out on the test what you could do is you can also try to do with a calculator kind of like what we did before 3 3 x plus 5 that's one of the equation the other one is kx plus 
15. The problem is you don't know what k is, okay? Um, if this is a multiple choice, you could just plug in the number. Remember, we talked about plugging the number in math point one. It'll give you four choices. Is k, does k equal to 5? Does k equal to, so choice A may be 5, choice B is 9, and so on. You just plug in the numbers, and one of them will work out, being, one of them being 9, will work out, you will see the line being um, 9, being overlapping each other. However, with the variable here, what you could do is you can add a slider, and the slider shows you what you can do is you can like slide the line back and forth and see if you can find a value that works. Um, okay, so just by doing that, you can see that here, it's somewhere here, and at this point here, it completely overlaps. So the value here is 9, then the answer is 9. You could do it that way. Uh, if you're sliding this way, like, oh, it's very close to, to this, and you need more um, negative, then you could click on this, and let's say, see if negative 50 will work to uh, 50 step one okay. but then you realize that you get um, very negative it just becomes more and more like vertical horizontal uh, vertical going up and down but it, it never goes past the uh, the the y-axis if you go this way however if you swing this way then it it uh, quickly swings over this way and it touches the line here so the value is nine so if you don't know this, as long as you know that one solution means touching it once, zero solution means never touching each other, and infinitely many number of solutions or all values means always touching the same line, then you can solve this question whether it's the math way or the decimals calculator way. Number two, in the equation above, a is a constant, so you don't know what a is. Uh, for what value of a does the equation have infinitely many solutions? So it's the same thing here. You can solve the math way, make the left side equal to the right side, um, or if you do the calculator way, then here you have a x minus 4 times 3 plus 2x, and here you have negative 12. And when add a slider for um, return, uh, this is y equals negative 12. And that's like that line there. So this slider will help you figure out what the right value is. And when you swing around, you notice that it kind of hits the horizontal line right here. And the value is 8. So the answer is 8. Um, but if you're, so that, it, that is if you're not, even if you're not given any of the choices. Since you're given these choices, what you could do is you can just um, type in the numbers here. So does negative 8 work? Is choice A right? It's not. They're not the same line. But uh, the number 8 works. They lie on the same line. So the answer is D. See how easy it is if you have a calculator or if you do plug and check? Let's move on to number 3. In the system equation above, A is a constant. If the system equation has no solution. Remember, no solution means that they never touch each other. So the two lines are parallel. What is the value of A? And let's just do it with a calculator a 2x plus 1 and then the other one is y equals um, ax minus 8 and we're going to try each value here we're going to see if negative 1 over 2 is the right answer and they're not they don't cross each they don't um, overlap each other it's 0 choice b the right answer no it's not it's choice c the right answer no it's not it's choice d the right answer Yes, it is because they are parallel and they don't touch each other, touch each other, so they have no solution. The answer is D. Um, let's see. We'll do. Um, no, uh, I think these questions are straightforward enough. So go ahead and do the rest four, five, six, and seven. Check the answer with a classmate and see if you guys get how to do these kind of uh, have, having infinitely many number solution or no solution kind of question should be pretty easy, hopefully. Now, the last section of math point four is composite function. And composite function basically means having um, more than one function, kind of like one wrapping around the other. So starting with, let's say if you have a g of x, a function g of x equals x plus one, then when x is zero, what is the value of g of x? And hopefully that's pretty straightforward. 
you plug in 0 into the x value. So 0 plus 1 equals 1. You plug in 1 into x here. So 1 plus 1 equals 2 for x equals 1. When x equals 5, then 5 plus 1 equals 6. Basically, every what for whatever the value of x, you end up with x, and then you add 1 to it. So 10, you add 1 to it, you end up with 11. And that's just regular function. Composite function means you have like something like this, where you have f of g of x. Um, and let's say if g of x equals 2x. f of g of x, um, in, in math, it's kind of like parentheses, and you start from the middle, so from the inside. So you first find what g of x is, and then you find what f of g of x is, um, after you get the value for g of x. So what that means is, um, looking at this, um, g of 0 is 1. So f of g, g of 0 means you get the 1. And then you try to see what f of 1 is. And f of x is 2, 2x given here. So f of g of x will then be 2. And um, if you have f of g of 1 here, then you find g of x first, which is 1 plus 1 equals 2. And then f of x, it's 2 times 2, so that's 4. And by now, maybe you would see that it's pretty straightforward. It's You solve the inside, and then you solve the outside. So once you solve the inside, you notice that f of x is just doubling the value of the x. So if the value of x, the inside here, g of x, is 6, then this would be 12. If this is 11, this would be 22. Okay. Uh, we'll do a few chapter practices here, and then we'll have you do the rest. In the xy plane, line L has a slope of 2. Okay, so it's slanted with a slope of 2. If line K is perpendicular to line L, which of the following could be an equation for line K. So in this question, line L has a slope of 2, but you don't know what the y-intercept is. You only know that it's y, uh, it has a slope of 2. So it's um, y equals 2x, and then... Maybe it's minus 8, maybe it's plus something, you don't know. And there's a line k perpendicular to line l, and you're trying to find the equation, um, a possible equation to line k. So basically you're looking for an equation that is perpendicular to this original line. And here's one thing that you need to know about the properties of lines and slopes, and that is if you have two lines that are, two lines that are parallel to parallel lines, then they have the same slope. If you have two perpendicular lines, then their slopes are the um, opposite, the, uh, the negative reciprocal of each other. What that means is, if I have line L being the slope of 2, okay, then the slope of this other equation, line k, will be the negative. So make that negative. Reciprocal means adding like 1 over uh, to this number. Or if it's a fraction, then you like flip the top and bottom. So 2 becomes 1 over 2 and then negative of it. So negative 1 over 2. This would be the slope of the new line. Which of the following could be the equation of line k? And the only thing you know is that line k needs a slope. You don't know what the y, what the the plus b. You don't know what this plus b value is. This could be minus a value or plus a value. You don't know. However, simply knowing the slope of this line is enough, probably, for you to solve this question. And you can go ahead and um, do it the math way and find the mx plus b, find the m in all these equations. Or um, we'll do it the calculator way for now. Uh, minus 5y equals 20. You have uh, a line here. The calculator cannot plot chained equations. Oh, it typed something wrong here. This should be minus 5y. Okay, so you have a line here. And by zooming in, um, let me see if you can see it this way. From here to here, this point is negative 2, 0. And once you move um, one, uh, two units down and one unit to the right here. This is one comma two. So from here to here, there's a negative two 
over 1. And so this line has a slope of negative 2 for this one. Slope of negative 2. And that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for a slope of negative 1 over 2. Okay. And um, maybe you know that y equals x is this line, kind of like 45 degrees going up. And y equals negative x is this line 45 degrees going down. Anything that is um, with a number bigger than, than 1, bigger than negative 1, uh, sorry, um, more negative than negative 1, um, like negative 5, it would be more vertical this way, so more slanted. Whereas if it's uh, like 1 half, which is um, 1 half, then it becomes less slanted, like more flat. So seeing that this is it has a slope of negative 1 half x, you should expect a line that's not as slanted as this line. So when you have this line drawn, you should know right away that it's not the right answer. Now take a look at choice B, 3x minus 6y equals 14. Okay, So this line is going up, and that must be wrong. It has to be a line that goes down, but kind of flat. 4x minus 2y equals 17, and that's more vertical, so that's not right going up. So the answer must be D. But just to show you, plus 12y. And on the real test, you don't need to actually plot the last line. If you once you have a, b, and c, you're sure that they are wrong, then go ahead and just choose d. There's no way that d is going to be uh, also wrong, unless you made a mistake before for one uh, a, b, and c. Number two in the x, y plane, line k intersects the y axis at this point and passes through this other point. If this point lies also on line k, what is the value of w? Okay, uh, and there's a math way to do it. Um, I'm thinking that. If you want to learn the math, we can learn it in school. Um, now we'll focus on SAT tips, specifically learning how to use the decimals calculator. So here, what we're going to do is we're just going to plot the two points here. Let's label that. And the second point is 2 comma 2. Let's label it. Okay. And here you have this other point, uh, 20 comma W. And you don't know what W is, but we can add a slider. And 20 is kind of like all the way here. And what we can do is we can use a slider and try to see what the value for w should be. And if the two points are here and here, you kind of know that this point needs to be a lot more higher than this. So let's make that into um, 30 and 10. So we stopped before. And we'll stick with whole numbers first and see if, if that works. We'll slide, slide, slide. Okay, and it kind of gets up here, and um, maybe you see that you need to go higher or not. So, with if you don't know any math, then what you can probably do is you can use this slider and maybe calculate, uh, maybe estimate a value for this, um, for for the value of w. I'm gonna put a hundred here. A slider. And I'm gonna oh I should label it. I'm gonna slide, slide, slide. It's probably somewhere um, going up, maybe higher. It's probably gonna be somewhere here, I guess. I guess if you're just looking at it. Okay. Um, and so this will be a question where it'd be nice for you to know a little bit of math because if you can draw this line, then um, well, 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 what you can do is if you can draw this line, then you can see where the line ends up. And if you remember, uh, if you don't remember how to find the slope, but you remember that the line for the equation for a line is y equals mx plus b plus b. And b is the y-intercept. And b here, 0, comma, negative 6, means the y-intercept of b is negative 6. If that's all you remember, then that's actually enough. Because all you need is to add a slider for um, m. You can slide this. And you can, you're can you trying to look for a point, an instance where this line goes through that point, 2 comma 2. And for SAT, you're not going to get an odd number like uh, 3.97 or something. It's always going to be a, a good-looking number. In this case, the good-looking number here is going to be a whole number 4. So 4 is the slope of this line. And now that with this line, with this blue line, drawn going past through these two points now you can go and 
move this point to a certain point that you're sure is where this line crosses. Okay. So the value here is um, 74 for W. And if you're not sure if this actually crosses the point, what you can do is let's remove this point. You can click on it. You can just click on it. Here, 20, 74. By clicking on it and dragging your mouse around it, you can find the value for uh, y at a specific x. So the answer for this question here is uh, 76 is what we had before. 20, 70, 74. We'll do a couple questions, a couple more questions. Which of the following question represent the line in the xy plane passing through this point and has a slope of negative 3? What is the decimals way to do it? So we have 0, 3 as a point. Let's label it. Go back home. There's that point. And you're looking for a line that has a slope of negative 3. So it's going to be y equals negative 3, because the coefficient, the m, is the slope, plus some kind of b that you don't know. Let's add a slider. So we'll slide this line to a place, and it looks like it's right there, where this line passes through this point, and b is 3. So that means b is 3. So that means the equation you're looking for will be y equals negative 3x plus 3 negative 3x plus 3, the answer is b. Number 4, in the xy plane, the graph line L has a slope 3. Line k is parallel to line L and contains this point, which the following equation is an equation for line k. So it tells you line L has a slope of 3. Line k is parallel. So remember before we said if two lines are parallel, then they have the same slope. That means for line k, this line here, it has also has a slope of 3. Remember that the number next to x is the slope, so you're looking for the number next to x being 3. So a and b are negative and positive one third. These are wrong, so it must be one of these. Which of the following is an equation for line k? Um, and you know that line k needs to pass through this point 3, comma 10. So what we can do is plug and check 3, comma 10 label it. That point is a point on line k. So is y equals 3x plus 7 going through that point? Nope. y equals 3x plus 1 going through that point? Yes. The answer is d. Could you have plot this in the beginning? Maybe. Let's take a look at choices a and b. If you don't know anything about slopes, y equals negative 1 over 3, x plus 11. Okay, so this line goes to this point here. y equals 1 over 3, 3x plus 9. This line also goes through this, this point. So choices a, b, and d all go through this point. And that means you need to know a little bit about math. And the only thing that you need to know about math would be what does it mean by having a uh, a slope of 3. A slope of 3 means the co the um, number next to the x has to be 3. Okay, So it's d, which is the black line, uh, 3x plus 1 right here. There are more questions here, and I'll leave the rest of the questions to you. So go ahead and do these questions by yourself. Then with a classmate, check over these questions, uh, and hopefully you'll be able to get all these questions right after understanding um, a few key points here. There are, uh, first, this is linear, that's what we're going over for now. A line is y equals mx plus b, and they represent different things, remember what they are. And if you are looking for the number of solutions, then zero equals a number means no solution, x equals something means one solution, zero equals zero means there are infinitely many number of solutions, or you can just graph it and you can see how many times the graph intersect with each other. Each intersection means a solution.
And for composite functions, you're not going to see that for the new SAT. So this is something that you can ignore for now. But if you do see it somewhere in life, then basically having f of g of x means you solve g of x first. And then that becomes f of the value that you get. Good luck with the classwork. And when you're done with these, go ahead with the classwork for the class on the website, as well as the homework for Math.2. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.